Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing another cute little square from Rita Berman's um, download. Um, this time I'm going to be using my Black Widow's pencils, it is the um, spider set. So I'm going to just start with doing the water. Um, I decided to start with the water because it will help me determine what other colours to do the rest. I'm going to use this colour called Everglade, it's quite a neony excuse me, a quite a neony um, greeny colour but it's a sort of bluey green. Now I'm going to go over those circles because they're quite small. I will um, possibly use a white pen to uh, go over them at the end if I remember. So I'm just going to go, these Black Widows are good for this little picture because they come to a lovely sharp point as you can see and uh, so I can easily get in between all the little reeds and rocks and bits and bobs. I might do this bottom sandy. Mm, I think I'll leave that. Because uh, we are on the bottom here, aren't we? Down there. Got all these fish and beach huts. There's a lot going on in this little teeny picture. The good thing with these tinies is that you can you can spend a long time on a picture and uh, have a really lovely result because it's small. You can still get it finished fairly quickly. Or if you've only got a, a limited time, you can finish something and it feels good to get a picture finished. So that's rather nice. So. Uh, I think a lot of people do like these sort of smaller pictures. I know I do and I like doing them for videos because it means that you don't have to sit through hours and hours of video and I know everybody's very busy and they like to have shorter videos sometimes to look at and a lot of people do do longer videos so I felt that some people had already done a longer video so I would do shorter ones just to do something a little bit different that I thought I would like and hoped other people would like and it does seem like um, some people do prefer the shorter ones so that's good. I haven't completely ruled out doing longer ones, Some I know some people have been asking me to do longer ones but it's uh, my time is often limited and I don't like half recording something and then coming back to it. If I break it into sections I can do that but it might look odd if I, I might and I might have been a different mindset for it. You know I mean you do I do obviously start a picture and then leave it and come back to it and some pictures take me weeks to finish but when I'm doing a video I think I would want to sort of get on and finish it really. Okay so that's my water for now. I'm going to go in and do this sandy piece. I think I'm going to use the stink mug to start with. This is a sort of brownie yellow. I'm going to use this to start with on these dot this dotted area which I think looks like sand. Oh, we've got another little fish there. Now we've got stones down here, I'm going to colour over those with this colour because the stones and the sand would be the same colour. So I'm going to do that. And uh, do all of these bits but I'm also going to go over the top with a yellow. And we've got a nice What's this one? I think, oh, banana. We use a banana and just go over the top. And the idea, there's two ideas in my head behind doing this. One is that it will cover any bits that I've missed because I'm not always very good at co colouring everything in and it will brighten it. Um, I think the combination of the two colours will be a little more sandy. In there. There we are. Okay. Oh, oh, there. Okay. Now the sky I'm going to do next. I'm going to do the sun actually. This is a banana. 
Is it going to be the right colour for the sun? Yeah, why not? So I'm going to use the banana for the sun. There we go. And then a blue for the sky. Now I like the, my reasoning behind, just thinking we've got this and this is sand. I'm going to do it the same as the bottom, so I'm going to do this first. Sorry, stink bug again for this bit. I realise we've got tufts of grass like sand dunes, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to do sandy looking. Um, the reason I like to do all this sort of background bit first is then I can decide what colours work with that. Um, if I, I do sometimes do backgrounds last or as I go along, but if with a limited palette of pencils, a limited colour palette essentially, um, you need to plan it a little bit. Because if I use every colour in the box and then decide I want a background, I may not have anything left. Of course you could always go and grab something from a different box. But um, if you uh, want to stick with this particular set, which I do today, then you need to be a little bit careful. And I actually don't want the background to stand out. I want it to fade back and I want it to be the um, the fish and the plants and the beach huts that stand out. So, that's, so if I do that first, then I can make sure that that happens. Okay, the sky. Hmm. I'm going to use the forget-me-not. It's the light blue to start with. And then I may make it darker after. I'm going to do that to start with. I think it's a nice sunny summer day. So the sky might be this sort of blue. If this is a beach in the UK, it wouldn't be. But remember, this is our trip around Europe. We might be in the Mediterranean, not in the UK. So uh, and it would be more likely to have a sky that's pure blue. I remember my very first childhood holiday, I think I was about five, and uh, that was, we stayed with, we used to go and stay with relatives when I was very young, but uh, my parents had saved up and we went away. We had to miss school because it's always che cheaper to go in the school term than in the holidays as it is now, and they couldn't afford to take us on holiday if they had to pay for to do it in the school holidays. So we did it in term time, and schools used to let you in those days anyway. And uh, we went to this seaside town, and it rained every single day. And all our holiday snaps were on the beach with a mac on and wellies, but still having a whale of a time building sandcastles. Right, there's our sky. Now... We've got all these little bits and bobs going on at the bottom. I'm going to do the starfish first. I'm going to do him with a bit of orange. I'm going to start with the toadstool. And I'm going to do him a dark colour around the outside. And then a bit lighter in the middle. Just because I think it will be more interesting. No other reason. So I'm trying to put more layers of this colour on the tips of the stars, the points I should say, and a bit less towards the middle and fade it to nothing so that we then go in with our probably actually, no not that one, I just argue with myself, um, and go in with this egg yolk colour to do the rest. Now I'm going to go right over the top of all of it because it will help to blend it all together and it will brighten it because that egg yolk is a bit, um, that, I mean that toast is a bit dull I always think. And there we have it. Now these edgy edge bits I'm going to do in a darker colour because they're sort of underneath so I'm going to grab this pumpkin colour and just do that, these bits in the pumpkin. There we go. Now we've got these two shells, I'm going to do these two together. Um, hmm, what colour shall we do those? I'm thinking some nice browns. So I'm going to take my foxy brown and do a layer all over them. I'm guessing these are sea snails. Or they might just be pretty rocks. And I didn't colour those rocks. Oh, sorry about that. The 
telephone rang. Anyway, we're doing our foxy brown um, sea snails, I think. As I say, we haven't done those, so we're just going to do those in a brown as well. We're going to use the second shade of brown, <clears throat> the um, tarantula, to uh, add some details. So I'm thinking we might put some shadow in at the bottom here, a bit under this curve this a bit the bottom of each of these stones and we could do the same on these even though we've colored them yellow we could still make them stand out a bit just a little a little scribble of brown a bit under here and around there lovely now we have our plants to do I'm going to do some of them green, but maybe not all of them. We'll see how it goes. Or maybe I'll do them all the same colour. I think I might. We're going to use our fang green. This is our dark green. And I'm going to do the bottoms of those. With this. And I'm going to do the same with this one. So I like all the dots on this leaf. It makes it look really interesting. I don't know what it is. And this one will go along there. Now normally I um, I colour, I've missed a whole load of sea there haven't I, normally I colour fish in orange but that's the colour I've used for the um, starfish and things so I'm going to have to tune differently. I'm just going to use my Everglade to colour in this bit. There we go. Um, now I'm going to use a toxic green to do the rest of the each of these leaves it's quite bright so they have a bright tip and a darker base it should be quite vibrant which is fun now I'm trying to decide on colours for the rest while I colour this. And my thinking goes, well I've done a lot of orange, green, blues, yellows. So we've got reds, but they're still quite similar to the orange. Or we've got um, um, we've got pink and purple and that's what I'm going to use for the beach huts and the fish but I've got to decide which is going to be which colour so here are our plants I'm doing them quite quickly but, oh. but I just think they quite nice like that you could go over with another layer of some yellow or a lighter green if you wanted to. I'm going to do the fish in pink. So I've got the plum pudding colour which I am going to use. Now I'm going to do the beach huts and mm, now I can't decide what I'm doing. Now I'm going to do the fish in pink. That's what I said. That's what I'm going to do. So they're going to be a little bit darker at the bottom and the top. Just because the sun is at the top as we can see and so it'll be darker towards the bottom of the um, ocean than at the top. And of course I should have reflected that in the colour of the water but I didn't. I kept it simple and just an even colour through. Oh, so 
sorry little fish no you forgot a little fish at the bottom there we go so purple we've only got the amethyst color and i'm going to do all the beach hearts in this color i think they'll look very pretty now i'm going to do everything in this amethyst and we're going to do, because we've only got the one purple, and not the windows, we're going to do some shading on them with a the blue and hopefully we'll be able to make it look like a different shade of purple rather than blue, but even if it looks blue it won't really hurt, will it? And we've got to think about what to do with those flags as well. is our purple, our amethyst. And I'm going to grab the darkest blue, which is the zephyr blue, and then I'm going to go in under all of these roofs with some darker colour around here, under the windows, just in little places here and there, just to give it a more three-dimensional feel that one I'm going around the door don't have to do the same on each of them that one I'm just going to shade up the side do a little bit on this fence top and bottom this one under the roof under the window and beside the door this one all of them under the roof because there would be a um, shade there this one maybe just that side and then along the side here so they all look a bit more interesting now with a bit of different colour and the flags I am going to do in a very vibrant red um, we're going to use the ladybug and they're all going to be bright I think that's quite fun you might prefer a slightly pinkier red or you might like to do them different colours I just thought this was a fun way to do it. Now, the grass we haven't done. So I've got my fan green again. I'm going to go over these pieces of grass. Now you could use um, you could use a fine liner for this or any sort of pen, a Posca paint pen, something like that might show up better. But I think this is okay. I'm just doing a few bits and bobs there we go now the windows on the beach huts I'm going to do with a grey the spider web colour is quite a dark grey I'm not going to colour the whole thing I'm just going to do a few lines here and there to uh, to just imply the light is catching the window and our last touch is with a white pen I'm going to use my jelly roll pen to do the bubbles in the water and the idea is to just go around the edge of them and if that fills in some of the centre that's okay. Not very accurate. I'm never very accurate with my colouring out of the lines, all a bit random, but hopefully that gives it an interesting look and hopefully it stops you being so stressed about going out the lines because really it doesn't matter some of us can't stick in the lines I haven't got a very steady hand I haven't got a shaky hand like my son has but that's just not very good at staying in the lines do a few dots on the starfish a few highlights on the snail then wants to write and here a little bit on the fish and I'm just going to give it a scribble oh I've got some paper over on the other side um, a few bits on the top of the fishes no nope, still doesn't want to write I think this one's running out I'm going to grab my white Posca instead this 
one was working quite well the other day. It's decided not to work today though. Just because I'm in a hurry, it's not going to work. There we go. Fit on each fish. Just a little bit of shine. And the edges of the plants. Just when you're doing this, go in the direction of the edge of the item you're putting a line on. It looks more natural. So these now look like the slightly shiny leaves. Be very careful not to do the bottom before the top like I did or else you end up smudging the pen all over when you come to do the top bit. Put a few highlights here and there. Uh, down there and some on here. There we go. I'm going to leave it there. Or else I'm going to just keep that as that end up all white. Okay, so there we go. There's our little scene finished. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and happy colouring. <laughs>